this wonderful bag here. See if you get it. Um, and the most important thing that he forgot to mention is this wonderful little medical kit here. But this here is your friend, your BFF. It goes above and beyond the minimum requirements of the law. And I mean, you always want to be super safe every time that you come on the boat. And this is just a nifty little kit to have. Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you today about gear and equipment that every boat should have. I just got a new boat. Well, new to me, it's a year old model. Got a pretty good deal on it. I'm happy about it. So really just an amazing boat. I've had been taking it out for about a week and just now really starting to equip it. As you know, stuff's coming in that I'm buying offline. I've got the, uh, I've got the issues that a lot of you guys have when I'm in the United States, getting that instant gratification of Amazon orders and ordering stuff offline. It's worse, I feel like, for me because when I'm out of the States, it takes can take up to a month for me to get gear when I'm in some little, you know, crappy country, third world country, whatever, on the other side of the world. If I need to get something over there, unless I charter a plane and have it flown in, which is just crazy money. So if it's not something very important, it can take me a long time to get it. Anyway, so I'm setting up all this stuff on the boat. I've got not just safety gear, I'm going to go through the safety gear with you guys, talk a little bit about safety gear, but really just gear and equipment every boat should have, and I'm not also not talking about fishing stuff right now. I'm not going to get into fishing stuff, I'm going to do a separate video on how to set up for South Florida inshore fishing. Um, this is just going to be applicable to every person who owns a boat or wants to own a boat, everything, and I'm just starting out, I'm going to do a follow up video on this, this is part one. But let me get right into it. I'll start with safety gear, okay, guys? This is my safety gear bag, okay? It says right on it, safety gear bag. This is a, just a, I didn't set this up. This is a standard safety gear bag built for this boat. The US Coast Guard requires every vessel to have a certain type and amount of gear that's considered safety gear, okay? I'm a firm believer that two is one and one is none, so my stuff in this bag is going to stay in this bag for an actual emergency. I'm not going to use this stuff for anything else. If I want other stuff to use, then I'm going to use it. It's also because if you get boarded and inspected, you want that stuff to be in pristine working order. You got to have that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you what's in here, but the best way to do it is to get the stuff you think you need. A lot of times it'll come with the boat. If you buy a new boat, you can look it up online, call the US Coast Guard, but the best way to do it is to call your Coast Guard Auxiliary. They will for free come in and do an inspection of your boat, okay? So once you think you have everything ready to go, call the US Coast Guard Auxiliary. It'll save you a lot of problems, a lot of headaches. They'll come out and inspect your boat, set an appointment, do all that jazz, okay? Here in Florida, every boat's required to have a fire extinguisher. Every boat's required to have a life jacket for every person that's on the boat, okay? You have to have a, a throw cushion and you have to have a signal device an air horn is a great signal device that's probably the most common uh sound device okay you also have to have a signal device like a flare gun okay this is just common stuff guys that every vessel is required to have this is a seven person boat i've got let's see five life jackets in this bag and then the life jackets I actually use, if we're doing something like tubing or something like that, then I use different life jackets for that, okay? I also recommend, I, ha I ordered some whistles. I also recommend attaching whistles. They're very cheap. I got them at the house. I forgot to bring them out today, but little just cheap whistles to attach to these. Um, you can attach also a light, an LED light. They're pretty cheap that when it hits the water, it's activated automatically. It's got a little, uh, capsule in there that when it melts away it turns the light on it's you know the water melts the capsule away some good stuff to do you kind of do want to upgrade this stuff in here also depending kind of more depending on your level of experience and stuff like that guys if you if, if you're new at boating if you're not an excellent swimmer i'm a certified lifeguard i have medical training i have um i'm a fish in the water guys i can swim i could swim from offshore to inshore without a problem with a life jacket on, uh, possibly without a life jacket on. I can do long, long, long open ocean swims. I've, I've grown up on the water. I've been swimming my whole life, but still it's very important to have the safety gear. If you're not a great swimmer, guys, you want to go a lot more hardcore than I'm going. And like I'm also saying, I'm going to do a follow-up video on this. 
this is so I, I recommend two bags that's the bag that's just going to stay like that forever and now let me get into this other bag that i recommend for daily use gear okay so i i got this bag also just off amazon okay it was one of the cheaper ones a lot of uh my bags are roll top bags and the roll top bags kind of are a little bit of a pain to get in and out of if you're going to be accessing them all the time all the time all the time so I'm, I'm trying this one out which is a zipper top which seems kind of cool and it's got a flap on there it's going to be in the in the center console uh cabin console whatever of my boat so it's not going to get wet anyway but it you know obviously it's a boat so let's go through the stuff we have here okay guys um i'm wearing the the edc throwaway knife this is 35 bucks on the website stainless steel super quick to access got the stainless steel chain it's at home on the water and it's an insane value this knife is a crazy badass knife for 35 dollars you can't get anything like this knife for less than 200 dollars okay you're looking at 200 around 200 150 maybe i haven't seen anything out there that's uh same value for 150 but i have seen some stuff that's semi comparable for around 200 dollars this is 35 uh it's a no-brainer okay fingerprint resistant handle ambidextrous the blade is time proven uh, design okay sharp on both sides so you can grab it with either hand it fits on the chain you can get a clip on there put it on your waistband anywhere you want to carry it so i carry this on me um you know normally under my shirt it's concealed just looks like i have a stainless chain on matches my stainless watch whatever okay so not not you know super low profile this is what i'm cutting fish with it's got, I got some fish scales on there right now actually and uh this is what i'm doing you know doing stuff with on the boat cutting chum you know butterflying a fish to throw it out for tarpon or something like that if i catch a ladyfish whatever you know daily boat chores i'm using the edc ghost knife this is great it's it's designed for non-permissive environments but it's also great because it's waterproof it'll never fade or anything like that um so i'm just gonna go ahead and start throw, throwing this stuff in the bag as we talk about it i'll probably actually put that i want that on top because i'm going to be accessing it a lot guys the search and rescue hawk okay if you're out on the ocean you want this cerakote finish you want the i got the compass on there the backup compass this cord and this is also available from bone tactical all three of these are available from bone tactical this cord has a uh fishing line in it okay and a fire starter in this paracord so you can cut that off you can the, the, the handle still has ridges on it so you can still use the tomahawk without the cord you use it choked up here you can use it to chop fish you can use it to kill a shark you know there's a, you can use it to defend yourself against high seas pirates you can use it for whatever you want to use it for okay excuse me i'm keeping a I keep an eye on these rods i got some live bait drifting so if you see me turning around or trying to listen to what's going on i sound distracted i'm out here fishing but um drift master okay this is a a sea anchor this one's by drift master i don't i haven't uh done you know i haven't actually used this one i'm gonna get online and watch some of their videos i'm not actually gonna use it um but i'm gonna watch some of their videos i read some reviews on it i haven't got to watch the videos yet but i read some reviews it seems pretty good uh some of the really some they get kind of expensive so this one you know read the reviews check it out this one should work uh for what i need it for but the reason you want is okay basically it's a parachute for your boat that goes underwater okay the reason you want a drift anchor every boat should have a drift anchor is because if your boat goes down and it's not under power and you want it you tell somebody where you're at or somebody sees you or something like that you use your signal devices and you don't have a drift anchor you might drift you know really far really fast the wind might blow you you know a different direction than the current's going you don't you, you never know the drift anchor helps that a little bit but the very main reason is that if you're anywhere where there's waves which is just about everywhere in the ocean and you throw that off the bow of your boat it'll keep the bow of your boat into the waves okay i had this boat out the other day and this guy comes by in like a 35 foot uh cabin cruiser some kind of crazy boat with it was doing he was doing 50 about 50 miles an hour flew past me in the intercoastal waterway when he passed me there was two boats coming towards us almost caused a big boat pile up he turned sideways causes a big wake i had about a six foot wake with this boat 
I was fine. I, I turned the boat into it and, and hit the wake head on. That's what you're supposed to do. If that wake would have hit this boat from the side, it probably would have flipped it over. This is a this is a, not a small boat. It's 22 foot uh, Sea Hunt. So it's a great boat. Takes waves pretty you know very well. But any boat, if you're out at sea and you're just drifting and your mo your motor goes down and you you hit some waves from the side, you're going to get capsized. You're going to have problems. That sea anchor, putting it off the bow of your boat, will keep the bow of your boat into the waves and it can keep you alive and on your boat, okay? Because you don't wanna to have to go in the water out at sea if you don't want to, okay? It, 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 it takes your problems that are at this level, being drifting in a non-functioning, you know, uh, stranded vessel, okay? And then when you're in the water by yourself, your problems go from here to here, okay? The big, big, big deal. You don't have access to your gear, your, your fresh water. Speaking of fresh water, probably the number one thing on the list is fresh water, okay? We are doing um, this entire container. This is seven gallons, and we only put half a teaspoon of bleach in there. You want to go with, you want to put bleach in your, in your water so it stays and doesn't get all moldy. I got this Aquatainer. It's BPA free, okay? It's seven gallons. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend going with less than seven gallons on the boat. That's kind of what I recommend for a minimum. This is also going to stay in the center console, fresh, clean drinking water. I suppose if you're boating on, uh, if you're freshwater boating on a lake or, or freshwater river or something like that, you could just use um, water purification devices. You wouldn't actually have to carry your water. I would carry a couple water purification devices. Again, put bleach in it. Always have your water. There's a lot of options. This is just one of the options. In my expedition vehicle, I use a um, very similar container, but it's the military NATO issue plastic jerry can. It's just tan rather than blue, about the same thing. I always put a cap full of bleach in those, just how I do those. I just put a cap full. It's probably a little more than you're supposed to put, but uh, there's a, a margin of error in there. It's not going to kill you. So bug spray and suntan lotion. I recommend doing the sport so it doesn't run. You can spray it on your face. It doesn't get in your eyes, all that kind of good stuff. 50, just because anything higher than 50 is kind of a marketing gimmick and anything lower than 50 is almost useless because you, you know, we're out of here tanning. We're in the sun all day. Sun protection is huge. That's why I have this funny hat on, okay? It's got super coverage on there. We got the glasses, got the long sleeve Columbia shirt. You know, it's a fashion statement, but you don't just wear these shirts for no reason, okay? It's got the sunglasses cleaner and the ham here. It's got a lot of, you know, pockets and things that you can use. It's, it's UPF 50 as well, so I don't have to put sunscreen on if I'm wearing this shirt. Um, the bug spray, I recommend high DEET. This is 40% DEET. A lot of people go a, away from DEET and they don't like using DEET, uh, maybe because of, you know, some health benefits or something like that. Guys, if I'm getting eaten alive by bugs and I'm out in the backwater in the Everglades or something like that down here in South Florida, you never know, man. The noceums are terrible. I'd rather just not deal with it. I don't want to deal with the bugs. I also have, you know, for camping or getting stranded or anything like that, I have a bug net that I can wear. Okay, I don't, uh, again, you, you're going to see that a lot of this stuff here, this, this bag is not complete, like I said, but we're just cover, covering some of the basic essentials. I'm going to put another sound device in here. I'm gonna put a spotlight in here that I haven't put in yet. I'm gonna put uh, the sound device being uh, another air horn um, and spotlight or you know heavy duty flashlight and uh, probably another flare gun. So just just some stuff like that that's gonna go in here because like I said, two is one, one is none. Okay, so we're going hardcore here. Like I said, with the with the uh, bug stuff this is a thermocell guys i've used these um in central america i've used these in the swamps of georgia i've used these you know every, some places where there's really 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 now you know the the uh la mosquitia in in central america which is one of the rem most remote jungle rainforests on the planet there's bugs everywhere and they work these things are awesome if you have not heard of a thermocell check them out they make the packages really hard to get open but definitely check thermocell out they're not paying me for this i didn't even i have not even reached out to them i probably should to get them on board a lot of my gear is sponsored as you guys know but i have you know this is completely thermocell didn't tell me anything i've just used all kinds of bug stuff and thermocell is just the way to go it's not cheap but this is a little personal one okay so you can you it also can be mounted on the boat with this clip right here 
or it can be clipped in the pocket, however you want to do that. The choice is yours. Um, they, they have these little propane rechargeable things, and then they have these screens. So it, the screen fits in there, and it just, it's kind of like those, those candles that you, or the, the coils that you burn. As far as for bugs go, that's the next best thing, and, and it's a lot cheaper, the coils. But the, they, these just work better. It's like a new and improved version of the coils, and it doesn't require lighting anything, and it doesn't go out, and you know what you're gonna get with it a lot more. So uh, I'm just gonna throw that out there, recommend that. Guys, definitely check this stuff out. Comment below, share this video, like it. Let me know if you like boating videos, if you wanna see more boating videos, if you don't like boating videos. I've got a channel that's gonna be fishing specific going up, okay? So I'll probably put this fishing video, I'm about to do a fishing video here in a bit. Maybe not today, maybe a couple days. I'm gonna do, do a lot of fishing videos. I've got already the channels up. Search it right now, go to YouTube, Bone Outdoors. Search for the channel, give me a follow, give me a subscribe on there. If you're into fishing, hunting, outdoor activities, definitely check out Bone Outdoors. Please subscribe over there because I'm gonna start putting my, I'm gonna start putting my specific fishing and hunting content on my Bone Outdoors channel. So guys, let me know what you think about that. If you wanna see the Bone Outdoors stuff, some fishing stuff here, let me know. If you wanna see all the fishing stuff only on Bone Outdoors and you wanna leave Bone Tactical for survival, preparedness, and you know, other random, you know, cool man stuff, travel, stuff like that, let me know. Let me know what you want to see more of. I'm doing these videos for you. One real quick emergency essential that we didn't talk about before is a electric trolling motor or an electric motor or a second motor like we have right here behind me. You can see right here that this boat has only one outboard motor, okay? It's a great motor, but just for the purposes of reliability and you know emergency preparedness you kind of want two motors so we've got this gasoline motor behind us this boat in particular holds 54 gallons i believe of gasoline and then we've got this electric trolling motor right here all right it can hold a charge for about 12 hours i don't even know how far i could go on it many many miles so something to consider is have two motors on a boat whether it's two big outboards Yamaha makes some of the best motors that you can get in my opinion. Definitely want to have two motors if possible. Something else that you should really be familiar with um, and that you should also have with you on any vessel or boat that anytime that you're out is a flashlight. Uh, really you need a spotlight, but this from through night, we're about to have this as our spotlight for our boat. It's 3,400 lumens according to through night. This is the WowTech A4 V2. It's rechargeable, okay? They sent me this, but they're not paying me. This is not a paid promotion, so I'll keep it real. I'll keep it honest, as I always do. Um, I'm going to show you guys tonight kind of what it looks like, but the reason that you want to have a flashlight is you really need... Okay, you can see even during the daylight, it's kind of... You know, you can even see how, how bright this is during the, during the daylight, but the reason you need a flashlight is so if I was, to, if I was here and I was, you know, driving at night, you know, the boat pretty pretty quickly, there's no way to really see what's in the water. So I would have to, I would be using this like this as I was driving the boat to kind of see what's in the water. Um, I, would, I would be scanning what's in front of the boat so I don't hit floating pylons or any kind of garbage, flotsam, debris that's out there in the water. That's one of the real big reasons you want a spotlight as above and beyond you know self-defense target recognition all that kind of stuff all right guys you can see here what i was talking about with the markers and with shining in front of the boat you can see the mangroves here way out there this thing lights up the mangroves very well there's a crab trap here in front of the boat you can see that okay here you can see the beam of the flashlight this is what i was talking about i'm scanning in front of the boat you can see it lights up the channel marker here it lights up the other channel marker here really just a pretty cool spotlight beam lights up the crab trap buoy here and the light is not even all the way charged right now i didn't have a whole lot of time to charge it but i'll plug it in charge it again get get some more video from for you guys in the future but this is why it's so important to be able to light up the water in front of you because if we were running dark here wouldn't be able to see anything really in front of us at all